My last video was talking about how Dr. Eggman is pretty much the most consistent and iconic villain and antagonist within the whole Sonic series. There's really no point where he's at a low or strays too far from what he's known as. Now he may have power, but that doesn't mean that he's the most powerful. If that was the case, he would be winning a lot more. Eggman's a bad guy, yeah, but he's no god. That title goes to the god of the Sonic comics, Enerjack. Now for those who don't know or really don't remember Enerjack, fear not, that's what most of this video is going to be about. To put it simply, Enerjack is a godlike character that pops up every now and again exclusively within the comics. Not just Sonic's, but mostly through Knuckles' comics. Yes, Knuckles did have his own series back then in the late 90s. There weren't too many issues, but there were issues, seeing that Ken Penders did write most of the stories that revolved around the Red Fist Echidna, so shit gets real confusing fast, and I mean fast. L look guys, to be completely honest, I thought most of my research for this video was just going to be me rereading what I don't know at the top of my head. So early stuff to do with the character, but boy howdy, I was wrong, very wrong. Like apparently, I never read a set of issues that are extremely important to Interjack's character, and thank Madoka that they add these little reference boxes within the issues. Either that, or I would be more lost than Christopher fucking Columbus, and like most people, would not know that you don't start at Sonic Universe 1. But I digress. Let's finally get into the odd, interesting, and pretty dark history of Enerjack. So, to start off once again, Enerjack is a god, or at least a very, very powerful character in the series. Now, I know I said it earlier, but Enerjack himself isn't tied to just one character. It's more like a title. Think of Doomfist from Overwatch, and forget the PTSD that you get from that game. I'm, I'm, I, I can't do that. I, I'm on the... Okay, I'm fine. Doomfist isn't just one person, it's a person who dons the gauntlet, and so far, and to my memory and from this Wikipedia page, there have been three, and the third one being the most prominent and what you guys would think of when I did mention Doomfist. Coincidentally, that's almost how Inner Jack went as well. They're really not mentioned at all in the stories, and I looked into it as much as I could, but according to the, um, Sonic the Hedgehog, the complete Sonic comic encyclopedia, there have been two Echidnas that have had the title and role of Enerjack. Both of them were scientific people who just understood how Chaos Energy works and gave the title to themselves, I'm assuming. Now for the one that starts everything off, his name is Dimitri. He was another scientist along with his brother. In the comics, Echidnas did have their own city, but it came under the looming threat of a meteor hitting it. And these two brothers put their 250 IQ brains together, and their plan to save everyone was... We should take Bikini Bottom and push it somewhere else! Basically, at least. In detail, it was going to use these 12 Master Emeralds and use their power to have the city become a floating island to avoid the meteor and to make sure that everything doesn't get destroyed when it's all over when they would drop the city back down, they would slowly siphon the power of the emeralds to descend safely. <laughs> but for whatever dumb reason the council or government said, nah, I don't like that plan. Dimitri, in a rage, storms off and pulls a Thanos and says, fine, I'll do it myself. So he absorbs 11 of the 12 master emeralds to become inner Jack. He builds this tower or something and tries to take over the city that rejected his plans. However, these fire ants break the tower to the point where it crumbles and crushes Enerjack, proving once again that in the Sonic series that even with seemingly unlimited power, getting crushed is a death sentence. Though this would explain how the Guardian of the Master Emerald would become a thing. The brother of Dimitri took up the mantle and it's been a generation type thing. I think that's pretty cool, honestly, and compared to most of the games, Knuckles actually takes being the Guardian pretty seriously. By this point, I was honestly confused when Interjack came back into the story. I knew he did, but didn't know how, and I thought it started here, but it actually starts here with his first return, where Knuckles learns about Interjack and investigates the ruins where his body was laying waste. 
Well, it was shown that he never really died, he just waited there. Both of them duke it out a few times throughout this mini-series, which is actually a prologue for Knuckles' actual series. Anyways, they end up in this rocket of some sort, it gets activated, and Knuckles escapes, but Innerjack doesn't. Pretty much given the car's route, where if nothing on Earth, or well, Mobius can't beat him, enjoy space, bitch. But he comes back once again, he tries getting revenge on Knuckles through torture methods, but it doesn't really matter, because as soon as he was getting started, Mammoth Mongol just says, lol, I have the win button. From that, Innerjack loses a third time, so now he's just Dimitri. And after that, he would just keep popping up more and more, surprisingly less and less as a villain, but just as someone. Due to time catching up to him, they made him into this abomination cyborg, tried to constantly talk Knuckles into being evil in some shape or form. It didn't work out ultimately, and not for long or for the right reasons, at least in this timeline that is. Dimitri would eventually just come back as a floating head, and with no body and consistently losing, Interjack was no more. Until Dr. Fenitivez was a thing, a villain who could probably have his own video, but for now, he influenced Knuckles to actually become Inner Jack himself. And it was pretty interesting. No one could really beat him. Not Eggman, not Shadow, not Sonic. But Super Sonic put up a pretty good fight, mostly due to Knuckles' power fading and draining by that point, and because his dad sacrificed himself. But anyways, it was a nice arc. By this point though, Inner Jack just seems to have nothing but a track record of losing. And I haven't really said why he's a god of some sort. What makes him all so powerful? Well, I was saving that part. Because all the other returns and versions of Innerjack honestly don't really do a good job of displaying real unstoppable power. However, may I introduce you to the Silver Saga. Silver the Hedgehog did get his own arc in the Universe series where he, um, went to another timeline. I had to do some mental gymnastics to figure that part out. Previously, I said that Dimitri was influencing Knuckles to be more like him. It didn't really work out to anyone's benefits. That's in the main timeline. Again, we're in Pender's territory, so it's all over the place, worse than the Twilight Zone. During that time, forget about the fact that Knuckles is green here, that's another thing for another time. Knuckles had a daughter who was the original Silver. She tried to stop Knuckles from becoming evil, but she failed. And because of that, shit went down. More down than you sending those not safe for work pictures in Discord 10 times a day. Yeah, I know you do it. And because of that, Knuckles did take up the inner Jack mantle eventually and, um, killed everyone and took over the world. I'm not joking. The story shows inner Jack at his prime of being a threat to everyone. Not only does he have unlimited chaos energy, but the main thing that he does in this timeline is that he's able to steal someone's soul, or core as they call it, which effectively kills them and uses their own soul as a puppet for himself. This dude legit had an entire wall of all the dead bodies he's collected for over the years. It's kinda fucked. And even though Silver had nothing to do with this timeline here, he offers to help out anyway. And the fight he has with Interjack is honestly really fucking cool. It more or less just becomes a contest of who can throw what at each other, but an excellent battle nonetheless. Like, Silver in the games is so limited on what he can and can't pick up, it's a little annoying. Mostly in 06 is what I'm referring to. But when he means business, he uses those psychic powers to the fullest. Like, he starts throwing entire buildings at him, throws and drags them all over the place with intense speed, Pretty sure this is the most all-out Silver ever goes, and it's really cool to see. But, mostly just a flex on Silver, Inner Jack is like, okay, okay, you can throw skyscrapers, cool, but watch this. And he gets off of the floating island and moves it upwards just to hit Silver. He literally threw the island at him. Anyway, enough geeking out. Silver basically figures out that he can just keep using the reverse Uno card on him to launch Inner Jack's attacks back, and then got his power drained again by the same sword from the other timeline. So, Lara Sue becomes Inner Jack and discovers that she can restore everyone's soul. So, if there's anything you can take away from all of this, it's that Inner Jack is just too powerful of a being that almost 
every time he emerges, he's defeated by a method that seems a bit anticlimactic. Oh, he was crushed and quote-unquote killed in his own tower, but he just sat in timeout for generations on end. Came back, then was thrown into space, returns for a third time, and gets his power drained by the object and weapon that's made to do so. And happens again in another timeline where he was winning! I'm starting to realize that the Sword of Acorns is just a get-out-of-jail-free card for almost anything. The only time where he's had a satisfying loss and good time, I would say, overall, was when he was slowly being drained of his power and back to the Master Emerald. With that one, at least, there were consequences involved. Every other time, not so much, or things just don't seem that threatening from Interjack's point of view. But besides his poor KDA, I enjoy the arcs that include him, and I can't say that Knuckles makes for the best Interjack, that's when the stories are the best with the character. Plus, I also have to compliment the design. Like, I mean, look at this, it looks dope as hell, like, it's really cool. But yeah, that is pretty much the bizarre history of this chaotic being known as Interjack within the Sonic comics. I mostly wanted to touch upon the Silver Saga, which is probably the best version of Interjack that there really could be, because, again, the dude basically won. He took over the entire world and killed everyone. That is pretty fucking awesome, I would say. So, uh, yeah, other than all of that, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below about Interjack, or if you want me to talk more about the Sonic comics, I'll try and see what other characters that are have, like, a pretty good interesting like Interjack, or is just as bizarre and stupid that'd be fun to talk about. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. You know what to do with all the links that I provide and everything of the sort. Stay safe out there. Thank you for watching. That's greatly appreciated, of course. Have a great day, have a great night, and everything else you know what to do.